Your nervous system plays a huge role in chronic fatigue, and you need to understand what exactly is wrong with it to recover and raise your energy levels again. So that's what we will talk about in this video. More specifically, I want to look at both sympathetic dominance and amygdala dysfunction, talk about what they are and how to fix them. To start off, let's talk about what your nervous system actually is. Think of it as the control center of your body. It integrates a huge communication network of billions of nerve cells that send and receive information. It can be roughly split into two main parts, your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes the brain and spinal cord, whereas the peripheral nervous system connects the central nervous system to the rest of the body. That means the peripheral nervous system allows the brain to receive and send signals to other areas of your body. When we're talking about chronic fatigue and related illnesses, we're mainly interested in the autonomic nervous system, which is part of the peripheral nervous system and controls involuntary body functions. For example, your heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, and digestion. The autonomic nervous system actually has three branches or subcategories, which are the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, and the enteric nervous system. I know that by now you're probably overwhelmed by all the different subcategories and names of the nervous system. It can definitely get confusing. The reason we dive so deep into the nervous system is because the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches are extremely important in your stress response, which you have to improve to heal from chronic fatigue. The way your autonomic nervous system works is basically through two different states. One in emergencies that cause stress. Here the autonomic nervous system will trigger the so-called fight or flight instinct. This is where the sympathetic nervous system takes over and two in non-emergencies with no stress and where the autonomic nervous system will dampen the fight or flight response and allow your body to rest, recover and digest. This is where the parasympathetic nervous system takes over. The enteric nervous system is responsible for the proper functioning of the gastrointestinal tract, so bowel movement and digestion for example. Since these take place only under stress-free conditions, we can see it as part of the parasympathetic nervous system to make things a bit simpler for you. What is important to understand is that the sympathetic and the parasympathetic branches of your nervous system need to be balanced for your stress response to function properly. If your body senses a threat, the sympathetic nervous system will mobilize and take over. That means prioritizing all body functions that allow you to quickly take action. For our ancestors, this usually meant either fighting or fleeing from an aggressor. Things that will happen in your body include a rise in blood pressure and heart rate, increased sweating, tensing of your muscles, and inhibition of hunger, digestion, and detoxification. This was our body's way of giving our hunter-gatherer ancestors the best chance of survival, for example when facing a tiger or some other type of threat. Only once the threat has passed will the parasympathetic nervous system then start to dampen these responses and slowly return your body to its normal resting state. Of course, nowadays we don't have to face tigers and fight for survival on a daily basis. That does mean, however, that our sympathetic nervous system has become useless. Quite the contrary, actually, because our body cannot distinguish between existential threats, like a dangerous animal, and more benign stress, for example, from a deadline or an important work project. While the work project definitely won't kill you, it will stress you, which the body interprets as a threat, which in turn triggers the sympathetic nervous system. And because most of us are constantly thinking and worrying about things such as our health, work, money, or a bunch of other things, our sympathetic nervous system works overtime. This is called sympathetic dominance, and it's a huge driver in chronic fatigue. Because the more often the sympathetic nervous system is activated, the more quickly it gets triggered the next time. This creates a vicious cycle where smaller and smaller issues become huge stressors and keep you constantly stuck in fight or flight. Breaking through this vicious cycle is key to recovery. But before we get to that, there is another important player connected to your nervous system that we need to look at. Your amygdala. The amygdala is an almond-shaped set of neurons located deep in the brain's medial temporal lobe. It plays a key role in processing emotions, especially fear and stress. When the amygdala detects stressors, it sends a signal to the hypothalamus, 
which in turn tells the sympathetic nervous system to take over. So the amygdala is upstream from the sympathetic nervous system. And we know from studies that stressful and traumatic experiences induce changes to the amygdala. For example, adults with PTSD have an increase in the activity of the amygdala. That means not only your nervous system can be imbalanced through sympathetic dominance, the amygdala as the trigger for the nervous system can also undergo changes that need to be reversed. So the million dollar question is obviously, how do you recover from these nervous system imbalances? We just learned that chronic fatigue patients are sympathetic dominants and potentially also have an overactive amygdala. That means they have a tendency for their stress response to overreact. The body is always on high alert and constantly trying to spot potential dangers. This alert state needs to be changed to allow your body to recover, heal, and properly calm down. So the goal is to bring you from a sympathetic into a parasympathetic state and we also want to lower the activity of the amygdala. How do you do that? There are many different approaches that you can find online. For example, amygdala retraining programs like the Gupta program teach you how to break through negative thought patterns that keep the amygdala active. This is helpful not just for chronic fatigue patients, but also for other conditions like IBS or Lyme disease. What you often find in these people is that they're constantly scanning for symptoms. They do this so often throughout the day that they have trained their body to always be on high alert. So after a while, much of it happens unconsciously. The goal of an amygdala retraining program is then to stop the scanning and refocus their attention on other things that are unrelated to their symptoms. This is usually done through relaxation techniques, meditation, and also teaching the person more positive thought patterns. I definitely like this approach and there are many people that see great results with it, but it's not always enough, especially for people with severe chronic fatigue, because it really only focuses on your software, so your thought patterns, but not on your hardware, so the body. And the body also undergoes certain biochemical changes that happen when you're in a constant state of fight or flight. Changing your biochemistry is a matter of lifestyle and nutrition. For example, you definitely need to fix problems associated with stimulating nutrients like iron and copper. Most people with chronic fatigue have too much of them in a bio-unavailable state in their body. That means the copper, for example, is very stimulating to the brain. It produces a lot of adrenaline, creates inflammation, and cannot be used or transported. So it cannot be eliminated. I talk about copper and iron toxicity in other videos in much more detail. On top of that, you also need to fix nutrient deficiencies of calming nutrients, like magnesium, calcium, and zinc. These are used up during stress and almost always low in affected people. As you know, after a stressful event that activated the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system should take over. But without healthy levels of these calming nutrients, this isn't possible. For example, you need magnesium to relax the muscles, and you need sufficient zinc to block the exciting copper. Such nutrient deficiencies can also create vicious cycles because the less magnesium you have, the more often you will get stressed, the more magnesium you will lose. So there you have it. These are the two main approaches to fixing nervous system imbalances. One more psychological and related to your software, the other more physical and related to your hardware. I recommend you do both together and it's also what I teach in my recovery program because all of the organs involved in your nervous system and stress response, so your brain, your nerve cells and also organs like the adrenal glands work together. You cannot look at them in isolation. That means you also need a holistic program. It sounds like a buzzword but it's true. Treating them in isolation and just based on symptoms usually doesn't work, especially for people who are very ill. I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one.